Hi everyone, I'm Dre, the host and founder of the Dragon Network. And for today's video, I thought we would touch on the topic of edge computing. So there are certain buzzwords that sort of fly around the industry every now and then, and they tend to make their way through the technical crowd first before they migrate up to the analysts and the other health informatics professionals. And one of those terms that sort of bubbling its way up to the top is edge computing. So I thought I would take a quick look at it today. So if you do hear it when you're having conversations with your systems engineers or your database analysts or some of your technical IT directors, that it isn't a foreign term to you and you can understand what it is they're talking about and why they're so excited about it. So keeping it as simple as possible, edge computing is computing that is occurring as close to the source of the data as possible. So what does that mean? So with the current healthcare infrastructure, we have a client server type arrangement in most situations. So we have an endpoint device where users are going to interact with or it will gather data points. The data is then going to be transmitted over the network, either public or private network. It's going to be processed by the central servers that are often located in an on-premise data center or hosted in the cloud. And it's then going to transmit that data back in processed form to the endpoint device and present itself to the user. This is great and it's been working very well for many years now. So with edge computing, the big difference that occurs is some of the processing is actually gonna happen either on the device itself or it's gonna do some processing in a gateway of sorts. So you may also hear the term fog computing, F-O-G computing, and that is actually just referring to a layer that happens in between. So if the processing isn't done on the device itself and it's done in that layer between the um, central servers and the endpoint device, that's sometimes referred to as the fog layer. So you're probably wondering why we would want to start processing data at or near the source and what the benefit of that would be. Some may be thinking automatically to the old full client install where everything was actually happening on the desktop and we migrated away from that to get to a client server type model. Um, this is a little bit different. This still does involve having centralized servers and that same client server type relationship. Uh, however, we're decentralizing some of the processing. So there's two main drivers behind this. The first one is data latency. If we think about the amount of time that it will take a piece of data to transmit from an endpoint device to a server, in a lot of instances, it can be fairly dynamic and it happens fairly quickly. However, if you're looking at huge data centers that are located you know, on the other side of the country or perhaps on the other side of the world, as computer processing gets faster, we start to notice that transmit time as latency. So the time it takes an action to occur, it to go out, hit the server, do the processing and come back, you can start to notice things even if it's just in the milliseconds. So in a healthcare environment, those milliseconds can matter. They can in other environments as well, but we have a strong drive to get to zero latency. With edge computing, critical pieces of data can actually be processed right at the data source or very close to it so that there's a very short distance that it needs to travel. And when we're talking about travel, I'm actually referring to traveling. So speed of light traveling back and forth, that's what we're limited to here. If it's happening at or near the device, then the only thing we're waiting for is the actual processing power. So we'll talk about some examples of how this will be used in a little bit that will help sort of understand that latency a little bit more. So the second big driver behind the development and the push towards edge computing is the Internet of Things, and really that in combination with 5G technology. So the Internet of Things is something that we're going to talk about a little bit more in another video. But for now, just think of a huge number of devices that would be connected and transmitting data. And where we're focused is on the huge, huge volume of data that that's going to generate. So if we're looking at light bulbs that become smart, as well as beds that can weigh patients, heart rate monitors, um, some of our RFID tracking tags, everything. So if everything is transmitting data in this whole Internet of Things world, that data becomes overwhelming and we're gonna sort of start to go back to the spot where we need incredibly fast bandwidth and incredibly fast server processing in order to make sure we don't have latency. So when we introduce edge computing to this scenario, it gets done on or close to the device itself. So it can sort of stay a little bit away from that huge world of data out there. So you're still gonna have data that's processed in the data center. We're not gonna decentralize everything, but you are going to offload so that you can start to really focus on having 
the larger processing tasks like uh, machine learning, some complex AI algorithms, and those types of things happen in your large computing power data centers. So one of the other big benefits of having edge computing occur in this Internet of Things type world is that if you've got processing that's actually happening on the device, then you don't necessarily need a connection to the Internet. So if you think about times when you're in critical situations and you have either low connectivity or you have connectivity dropping, if some of the processing is happening on the device, it can continue to happen on that device and it can just sync up with the centralized database when it is back online. So this could help in all sorts of situations and actually would allow us to continue to use some of those things in situations where we've got interruptions or, like I said, low bandwidth. So from healthcare, you can see where that could be a huge positive. So to understand edge computing a little bit better, one of the things that might help is some use cases. So there's three use cases that I want to just briefly touch on to sort of give us an idea of how this is going to fit into our environment and why the term keeps coming up so frequently. The first one is rural medicine. So like I said, if the device itself has edge computing capacity and has the ability to process things on the device itself or in a small gateway that's perhaps located as a mini on-prem data center, let's say, then you have the ability to overcome some of the significant challenges that we have with connectivity in remote places. So you may not have the ability to put an on-premise data center that can house everything on site, but if you have gateway tools that you could install, for example, that can manage the edge computing, you may be able to get around a little bit of that. And same thing if you've got smart devices that actually do edge computing on the device itself. So the second one we'll touch on is wearables. So as we look into everything going forward, we are now measuring with our watches, our blood oxygen levels, our heart rates, our fitness, our sleep patterns. It's generating a huge amount of data and we haven't connected that just yet directly to our EHRs, but at some point that is likely to happen. So if we look at the Apple Watch as an example, the heart rate monitor that is currently running in the background is keeping an eye out for elevated heart rates as well as low heart rates. So you may have noticed if you have one that you'll get a alert that asks you if you're exercising. That's because it's reading your heart rate and it's noticed that your heart rate has gone elevated. It's not super, super high, but it's higher than it usually is for a sustained period of time and it's gonna alert you. So that's actually tracking things in the background. The alerts that are happening and the processing to understand that it actually is higher or lower than your normal is edge computing. So it's going back and forth with the server and it is analyzing over time, but there is still some processing that actually is happening on your watch. So if you look at other things like the fall monitor, so if you've fallen and you haven't got up and you've got that alert turned on, that's the same thing. So there's some edge computing processing that's actually happening there so that it understands that a falls occurred and it's going to alert you. It's going to generate that quick alert for you. So wearables is another place where the huge volume of never ending data is not necessarily something that we want to ingest in its raw format. We're actually likely to look at ingesting just the highlights or the pre-processed data that's generated from that. So give me a reading of all of the times in the day that it was elevated or below the normal heart rate, I don't necessarily need every minute of data that that Apple Watch wearer had a heart rate tracked. So my third use case that I'll talk about is certainly not the last one. There's so many of them really to talk about in the healthcare space, but it's during surgical procedures. So if you have a complex surgery going on, so let's say an intraoperative brain mapping, for example, you have so many monitors and so many different devices that are actually reading data, but you also have a situation uh, in that case where you're stimulating with electrodes uh, the individual's brain while they're awake. You're actually looking to map out the brain. So latency in that instance is somewhere where we definitely would want the latency to get down to zero if possible. So we want to make sure that any changes in those physiological monitors that are going to require healthcare professionals to make decisions or to react or to actually uh, start sort of paying closer attention and tracking certain things. So in situations like that, reducing the latency to zero is incredibly important. The other thing that's important from an OR perspective or from a procedure-based perspective is 
if you have certain monitors and certain types of devices that have the ability to do some processing, then the risk you have if you lose a data connectivity is decreased significantly. So if you can still allow some of those things to continue processing in real time, even if you just experience a blip in your network connectivity, it can be a huge benefit to the patient. So I hope that this brief explanation sort of gave you an idea of what edge computing is and how it's sort of making its way into the healthcare space. Edge computing is fairly new. It's not on all devices yet, but you will start to see some processing power put into more smart devices as they go forward. So some of our smart pumps, smart monitors, of course, as I mentioned, smart wearables and things like that. So keep an eye out for them. And now that you know what the term means, I hope it'll make those conversations a little bit easier. So that's it for today. I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their day and I will talk to you again soon.